Despite broad use of standard treatments and advances in care, the prognosis for patients with heart failure is poor. More options are needed, and here at AHA, there is a late-breaking clinical trial on such a new approach. It is the Cosmic HF trial looking at cardiac myosin activation for the treatment of heart failure. And to discuss the study, I am with Dr. John Tierlink, who is a professor of medicine at the University of California, San Francisco, and the director of heart failure at the San Francisco Veterans Affairs Medical Center. Before we talk about the study, why are you looking at cardiac myosin activation? Yes, very catchy phrase. Exactly. I have to look my, my yeah, yeah, it's like it's not PCSK9, but it's still pretty tight. It's, yes. Well, so the specific novel agent we're looking at is omicamp of macarbal, which I think gives PCSK9 a close run. Um, so as you know, kind of since the, the advent of, of extraction of adrenaline in 1897, since then we've been struggling to find agents that can improve cardiac performance. Unfortunately, our available agents right now are known to cause arrhythmias, increased myocardial oxygen demand, and increased mortality. Yet we still are compelled to use them because we have no alternatives. So there's, this is a huge unmet need. Why cardiac myosin activators? Because they work through a very unique and novel mechanism of directly increasing the function of the myocyte. And it does this by increasing the transition state between myosin glabbing on to the actin from a weakly bound state to a strongly bound force producing state. And it in effect does more hands on the rope, if you will, in terms okay. of pulling and, and increasing function. That has been shown in in vitro, studies and in, in other studies to actually improve stroke volume, improve cardiac output without increasing intracellular calcium, without increasing cyclic AMP, without increasing DPT, and without increasing myocardial oxygen demand. We took that forward as an intravenous formulation into stable, heart, uh, stable uh, healthy volunteers, and then stable heart failure patients, and then acute heart failure patients, and across the board in all of those studies, Omicaptin Macarbal was able to have its pharmacologic signature, if you will, of increasing systolic ejection time and having other improvements in cardiac performance. So now we're looking at the expansion phase of a trial that's called Cosmic HF. Yes, great name. So it's the follow-up to Atomic HF. So we went from very small to very big. Um, so Cosmic HF is a phase two, two-phase study to try to select an oral dose to go forward whether we can find one that actually is, is appropriate right. for going forward. So the initial dose escalation phase was about 90 some patients looking at three different formulations of omicamp of macarbal. And there we just looked at pharmacokinetics and said which formulation will give us the type of plasma concentrations, the type of control over the dose that we'd like to be able to take forward. Right. We selected a formulation from that and then moved it into the expansion phase. And during this phase, of 450 patients or so, it's really 448 patients, we randomized patients to three treatment approaches. One was placebo, the other was 25 milligrams twice a day, and then the third was starting on 25 milligrams twice a day, and then at eight weeks we took a, a pharmacokinetic sample, and we said, well, if, if, if this patient looks like they benefit from a little more, they were up titrated to 50 milligrams twice a day. Okay, cool. So those are the three dose groups, they were treated for 20 weeks, and during that 20 weeks they had pharmacokinetic testing at intervals, as well as serial echocardiograms. And that's you know, kind of how we were trying to look at the pharmacokinetics and the effectiveness of omicamptive in chronic heart failure patients. So what did you find? So we found, first of all, that the pharmacokinetics with this, this approach were very reliable and we did not go anywhere near what we had set as an upper limit of where we didn't want to go beyond, which was 1,000 nanograms per milliliter. By far, most of the concentrations were in the 200 to 300 nanograms per ml range. There was one patient who went to 812. So we were very comfortable with the pharmacokinetics, and that was actually the primary driver of the trial. Interestingly, from the echocardiographic data, we once again saw this pharmacologic signature of an increase in systolic ejection time. But associated with that, we saw increases in stroke volume, increases in fractional shortening, and increases in ven um, left ventricular ejection fraction. So those were improvements in ventricular function. They were all statistically significant compared to placebo. In addition to that, we saw improvements in ventricular size and volumes. So now we had in, in statistically significant improvements in end systolic and end diastolic dimensions, as well as volumes.
So now we have evidence of increasing contractility with the heart, with the reduced um, systolic uh, dimension or volume, but also a decrease in the diastolic dimension, suggesting perhaps remodeling effect, a beneficial remodeling effect. These were also associated with improvements in heart rate where there was actually a decrease in heart rate, which is completely different than any other agent that improves cardiac function, as well as significant decreases in NT pro BNP. So we have across the board this very consistent message of it helping the heart, perhaps improving remodeling, but definitely decreasing sizes, as well as getting biomarker evidence of improvements. That is a lot of bang for a little pill. It is a lot of bang for a little pill, but it doesn't come without you know, some questions. Right. And one of those questions is this increase in troponin that we saw. So at 20 weeks, there is an increase, a median increase, change from baseline in the omicamptive macarbal treated patients of about 0 0.006 or 0 0.007, depending on which group, um, at 20 weeks. Then that's nanograms per ml right. of troponin I. That's the level that an endurance athlete gets at the end of some there, but it was consistent. And, and when we stopped the omicamptin macarbal and looked again at week 24, all the troponin levels came back to baseline again. We don't know what to make of this finding. Um, but it is the first time that any of us are aware of where we've seen these really small changes in troponin, yet all of these beneficial effects. Usually if you're causing myocardial necrosis damage, you don't get improvements in volumes, function, and you certainly don't get decreased nt and peace. Wait till we get these super high sensitive tests because once those are, are in place, it's going to be. Well, we did do, this was with high sensitivity troponins, right. but not with the ultra sensitive tests. And, and once those get right. approved, it's gonna be. We are learning a lot about <laughs> troponins yeah, we through really these are. trials. And it's gonna be very interesting. So what about safety overall? Excellent question. That was a, a single element that you were, what about everything else? Right, so, so the uh, tolerability, the same number of patients continued with its placebo, so it was very well tolerated. Very good. Um, and there was no difference in adverse event rates, no difference in serious adverse rates, events rates. And when we looked at even cardiac specific serious adverse events, right. there was no difference between placebo and omicamptive macarbal. So from a safety and tolerability standpoint, it was um, very well behaved, um, other than this troponin. Now, this was not an outcome study, but data will be forthcoming, correct? I mean, where are we in the process here? You've got, you said there's two phases to this phase two? Well, right, well, so, and, and so I apologize if I didn't make that clear. The first phase was the dose escalation phase where we chose the modification, modified release form. The second phase was the expansion phase. Okay. So I've talked to you about both phases of cosmic HF. So where are we going next? So we hope to go to phase three and that decision will be made by the people who write the checks. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But at this point, you, see, you seem to be happy about what you're presenting. I mean, this looks really it optimistic is, it, at the I moment. I think it is some of the most, well, it is the most compelling phase two data that I've ever seen. And um, you know, so from that standpoint, I'm really looking forward to, to hopefully performing a phase three study and seeing whether this can, in fact, fulfill its promise. We found in other studies that the most promising predictor of improving survival and reducing um, hospitalizations is decreasing in ventricular volumes and decreasing NT pro BMPs, both of which were clearly shown in this study. Well, this is certainly one of those please stay tuned moments. And we have a lot more from AHA 2015. Look around for the videos. Then, of course, check CardioSource World News, where I am executive editor Rick McGuire.